Hey guys, this is Austin. The other day, I was having a conversation with a couple of tech YouTubers when we all had the same realization. Smartphones are kind of boring now. The last decade has been absolutely incredible in terms of smartphones. I mean, in 10 years, we've gone from this to this. However, the issue is that here in 2019, everything's kind of great already. There's not these huge leaps that we've been accustomed to over the last few years. Now, phones being good these days is certainly not a bad thing. But for me, the wow factor is kind of going away. Now, sure, there were absolutely huge designs that really revolutionized things back in the day. But in the last couple years, I mean, the last phone that legitimately made me say, wow, was the Oppo Find X. And with the motorized slider, even though that was cool, at the end of the day, it still wasn't that different than other smartphones. The formula has already been kind of figured out at this point. So I sat down with John Rettinger, an absolute OG of tech YouTube, who has seen a phone or two or a hundred. It's like phones were different. Like Blackberries had physical keyboards, you know, uh, Windows Mobile, had a, had a stylus and there were flip phones. Like there were very clear different styles of phones and there was a different phone for different people. It seems like now we've got just like different versions of a rectangle. So, so we were talking beforehand and I had a question that I wanted to ask you uh -oh. that I wanted to wait till you're on camera to ask you. Not good. So do you think the iPhone killed phone designs? Yes. 100%, right? Totally. I mean, it's, it's, it's not even like a question because if you look at phones before the iPhone, there was, like you said, all these different weird shapes. After the iPhone, everything's a rectangle, everything has a screen. In the last decade, the screens have gotten bigger, the phones have gotten bigger. But if you look at like the shape of a phone now, it's just a screen, right? There's no bezels anymore. There's generally not a lot of notches anymore. I mean, a lot of companies, their idea of differentiating the design, it's like, oh, it's like semi-holographic on the back. Or, oh, we've got some super shiny color, which is cool, but like, it's not exciting. It's not fun. Nothing. And they it killed design because it was so successful and it's a, it's a me too world. Let's take the brand new Galaxy Note 10 for example. I recently got to take a look at it and there is a lot to like. It takes the current design language from the Galaxy S10, brings back the S Pen, stretches the screen out to the edges, and well that's pretty much it. This has become more and more of a problem for the Note line lately. Sure, if you're really into the S Pen, more power to you, but for most people, you're probably going to be better off sticking with the Galaxy S10, as Samsung has made the lineup confusing to say the least this year. If you compare the Galaxy S10 Plus to the Note 10, it is a really odd comparison. So the Note 10 drops the headphone jack, the standard version of the Note 10 doesn't have a micro SD card slot, and to top it all off, even though they have very similar screen sizes, the Note 10 has a lower Full HD resolution compared to QHD on the S10+. Plus. Now all of this means that the Note 10 does come in at $50 cheaper in theory, however when you actually take a look at the Galaxy S10+, Plus, while the MSRP is $1000, you can very easily find it for significantly less than that, which makes that Note 10 a very very tough sell. Now there is a brand new higher end Note 10 Plus, which does bring a lot of the major features back. So you've got that huge 6.7 inch display with a proper high resolution. You have the improved DeX experience. You get the micro SD card slot back, even though not the headphone jack. And you do get some other niceties such as faster charging as well as faster wireless charging. But all of this is to say that the Note 10 Plus comes in at over $1,000 before you even get into the 5G model. This is a problem for the entire smartphone industry, but especially when you look at Samsung's lineup, it gets very confusing very quickly. Right now, they have seven flagship models, ranging from the slightly entry-priced Galaxy S10e up through the Galaxy S10, the Note 10, and if you want to go for the bigger guys, you have the Note 10 Plus and the Galaxy S10 Plus. And then to round it all off, there's a 5G version of the Galaxy S10 Plus, as well as a 5G version of the Galaxy S10 Plus with 5G. No, sorry, Note 10 Plus with 5G. Yeah, right. It's the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G. I don't want to unfairly single out Samsung here. Lots of other companies do this. For example, Xiaomi sells a number of very similar phones. In some cases, they're nearly identical under different brand names in different parts of the world. And even looking at Apple, you can see that the lineup has grown steadily over the years from one iPhone to two and now three and likely four before too much longer. It is very much a case where smartphones have gotten so similar that their only real way of differentiating is small little tweaks of, oh, this one's a little bit smaller. This one's a little bit bigger. This one has one extra feature just to keep people interested and most importantly, keeping people upgrading. 
what's the difference between phones like year over year? Like, yeah. okay, so you get an in-screen fingerprint reader, that's different. You've yep. got a face unlock, that's different. But once you have those things, like, like where, where do you where do you go from there? We're like, we're seeing like, I mean, I think the last couple of years kind of felt like it was a an accelerated like end point for the the huge development, right? So like, we went from like bezels to like slightly smaller bezels to smaller to notch to gone, right? Like that yeah. kind of disappeared very quickly. The fingerprint sensor went from like, oh, it's like kind of on the home button to the back to the side to the screen, right? Face ID went from this huge thing to smaller and smaller. We've got pop up like selfie cameras, like yeah. a lot of things that kind of felt like the end times of like, okay, cool, let's make this thing the purest version of the rectangle we can. But now that we've hit it, it's like, okay, and now you're going to do what? Uh, bigger battery, you're gonna make it thicker, you're going to give it a, a brighter screen. Like, I mean, there's obviously innovation and there's like sort of iteration, but the actual smartphone as it exists now, I can't see is going that much farther before you go to folding phones or you go to like something which is completely different and you tear up the playbook. And I'm sure that companies will yeah. try. I'm sure we'll see some wacky designs every you know year or two. It's like, oh, this thing is like a half folding, half flat phone or whatever the case is. But the design as it is right now is not really changing and people don't need to upgrade as much, which I think is a huge problem for these companies as mm -hmm. the smartphone space really reaches maturity and reaches sort of saturation that almost everyone who wants a smartphone has already bought one. To show just how similar smartphones are, we're going to play a little game called Guess the Smartphone. I will be blindfolded and Ken will give me a variety of smartphones new and old to see if I can tell if there's any difference between them. Spoiler alert, probably not. All right, smartphone number one. Well, I immediately feel a vertical camera. I mean, I would say that this is an iPhone. It's got the same rounded edges. I'm gonna guess iPhone XS Max. Yes. Hey! All right, next. This one's got a little bit more heft to it. Um, oh, so we, we've got a headphone jack. Okay, that's a, that's something right there. No, it's, it's, I'm going to say it's an honor phone of some variety. No. What is it? Redmi Note 7. Ah, oh, the Note 7. Okay, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. Oh, okay, this is uh, chunkier, glass, um, fingerprint sensor on the back. The closest thing I can think is it maybe the Nokia 9, but I'm not really sure. It is the Nokia LG G8 ThinQ. Wait. What? This is the G8? Yeah. Why did you say Nokia? Oh, there's a headphone jack. I didn't feel the headphone jack. Ah! How is Nokia close to LG? It's not. You're just you're just don't trolling think, don't, me. Don't think about it. Okay. Big phone, fairly light. Oh, we've got a physical button here. Well, I mean, that's a giveaway. I wonder what phone this might be. Oh, we've got is that fingerprint sensor right here? Mmm, this is a Note 8. I'm gonna say Note 8. It's a Galaxy Note 7. This is 7? Oh! Ugh. Take us back, I don't want this. Trying to kill me over here. Oh, this is a big boy. This has got to be Razer phone. Yeah. Definitely Razer phone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing, Razer phone 2, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a big boy right here. Okay, oh, this is a big boy. Heavy. Ooh. Well, I'm feeling like a ridge here. Oh, this has got to be ROG phone, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can feel like the, the fake vents here. Uh, man, that's that hefty. Gaming phones like the Razer phone are a good example of how this should work, but it kind of doesn't in the mobile space right now. Now there are some legitimately gaming focused features which I like on the Razer phone. Higher refresh rate, great audio, but the underlying processor, the underlying actual capability really isn't all that different than a much thinner, much lighter, and in some cases much cheaper smartphone based on those same specs. I mean sure, the marketing and the RGB is there, and for some people that's enough, but when it comes to a legitimate different smartphone, you're getting almost the exact same experience as pretty much any other flagship out there. And that's kind of a problem as far as I'm concerned. When you look at the PC space, there are hundreds if not thousands of different models to choose from, and the differences here are actually really substantial. So if you're picking up a thin and light 2-in-1, it is a very, very different system than a beefy over-the-top gaming laptop. Not only in price, of course, as well as stuff like portability, but importantly, in the actual capability. All smartphones, especially on the high end, kind of do the same thing and have very similar performance, very similar specs. But in the PC space, we have lots of different options, lots of different choice, and meaningful differences in what these systems can actually do. A gaming laptop has a very different feature set than a thin and light one, and it's just sort of the way that the, the PC space is developed that the smartphone space kind of hasn't. It's all very homogenous, it's all very similar. 
Where we're starting to see an actual difference is with folding phones. Now yes, they may have not had the smoothest launch in the world, however I do think there is an absolute ton of potential. And if 5 years from now we're looking back at this moment, I do think phones such as the Galaxy Fold will be the first of the next generation of smartphones that become standard. Or it's a complete failure and we all give up and go to like a super thin phone from Black Mirror. But you know, time will tell. I'm a Galaxy Fold homer, like I loved, I loved that phone so much. I don't care that it had problems. I think if they had just called it the Galaxy Fold Developer Edition, Idea. Like just call it developer yep. edition, there would have been z like zero problems. But using that, that was the first time since you know the older phones where you saw something different. You know, opening up Twitter on the front screen or Instagram and then opening that up and having a bigger experience. Go to the gym and you're watching Netflix. You can open it up and have a bigger screen with you without having to, to carry an iPad. That was something different that I think was different with a purpose instead of different just for like, Not look, look, look at us, like yeah. the BlackBerry Passport. They're like, why'd you make a square? Like, that's weird. What pockets are gonna fit a square? But it like it was different. Yeah. But it was like weirdly different. It was different for no reason. No, I yeah. totally agree. And I think it's a really interesting thing to think about. I'm curious to see what the final evolution of this is. Because if you look at the iPhone, right? You compare the iPhone to even the iPhone of today, you can see that it's like it's similar, but it's obviously a lot thinner, yeah. you've got a much larger screen. Like there's a huge evolution there. And I'm curious to see how far something like a folding phone can be pushed. Because I mean obviously there are fundamental issues of like when you make it so thin, is it gonna rip or is it gonna like yeah. break or whatever? Like you can only imagine it can go so far, but how far is it? Is it 20% thinner? Is it half as thin? Is the screen twice as big? Like, I don't know what that final iteration looks like, but I like to think that if it's something that people are really into, that it will continue to get better and better. I think consumers, and I'm lumping myself in there, are so fickle, and we're all such hypocrites yeah. about things we want and don't want. And then a couple of years, like, we're gonna give you something crazy cool. And you're like, nah, I don't know, it's a little thick. <laughs> this folding phone that I have in my pocket, or like, like it's in, it's so amazing that these things are even existing, and I guess I worry that like and again being part of the problem that we're too critical that it starts to stymie innovation. I mean, let's face it, we're talking about rectangular slabs of glass and metal. Now, because phones are so good these days, because 95% of phones can do absolutely everything that a person needs, really the only differences that we're truly seeing is like, oh look, the camera's a little bit better, or there's slightly more performance, or maybe we have one added little feature, which is all great, which is all stuff that I wanna see, but does it get me excited? Does it get people amped and ready to upgrade their phone? No, it doesn't. What it does is it means the people who own smartphones today are not gonna just hold on to them for a year or two years, but they'll use them for three, four, maybe even five years, and that is absolutely coming back to hurt these companies. They rely on people buying phones on a regular basis, and if they can't make these upgrades sexy and interesting, then their sales are going to continue to fall. I mean, everyone has a smartphone, or almost everyone has a smartphone at this point, so really the only growth opportunity for most companies is to keep, keep people on that upgrade cycle. Keep them on the hamster wheel, keep them moving and buying that new iPhone every year. Because if not, say goodbye to those sweet, sweet profits.